Hey guys, uh, thought I would do a uh, review this time for this video. Uh, yeah, I know, earlier I said I wasn't going to do any reviews, but uh, this time I feel like this review for this system is definitely needed at this moment because there's not too many good reviews out there and there's people on forums asking questions about this system. So I thought, I have it, why not try and answer a few questions for people who are wondering. Uh, I was wondering myself, but I went ahead and took the dive and got one. And I am talking about the Retro Duo Portable, or the RDP version 2.0. Core Edition. Uh, the Core Edition. So this means that it comes with the system and the bare necessities, uh, and that's it. No controllers. No extra controllers like the RDP version 1 came with. Uh, so that's kind of a downfall, but not really because it makes it just a little bit cheaper. Uh, this was $78 free shipping on eBay so it's really not a bad price considering all the library uh, that you can get to uh, to work for this system uh, allegedly so we're gonna find out don't really have any Famicom games but uh, I do have a, a nice little SNES NES library I can test a few different games out um, this is nice because it does come with the adapter to uh, play NES games on and it also sold separately a retro gen adapter to play Genesis games on so there's three uh, different types of video games you can play here on this one system which makes $78 not a bad price. Uh, right on the back of the box uh, tells you the version 2.0 upgrades for anybody wondering what's the difference between version 1 and version 2 on the back of the box. Upgraded LCD screen. A bright LED battery indicator which is very important and I don't know why they didn't have it on the first version. Improved D-pad and button layout crisp and clean sounding speakers, increased compa compatibility for games, and there were some issues I guess with uh, some of the games on the Retro Dual Portable version 1, and we'll see if they have fixed them. I'm going to look at a few of those games in just a few moments. So, upon opening the box, first thing you're going to find is the manual. Uh, here we go have the uh, here's the, the, the connector for the NES that it comes with retro port for the NES you got the uh, the actual system itself and uh, it's, it's a very nice piece it looks good it feels good uh, it's not too heavy it's not too light it feels about right for the device uh, here is a stand just to set it up on to kind of charge it or I guess if you want to uh, I'll get up to your television, kind of set it on that. The uh, standard AV cables. You have a uh, SNES controller port, two, or two controllers, or um, you could actually use the RDP controllers, but why not just go ahead and use the SNES controller. You have the, uh, the standard wall charger here, and, uh, and some actually screws. I don't know what that's for. Uh, anyways, that's in the box itself. Now let's just talk about uh, the button layout first off. Button layout. YXBA. Uh, looks really good. Definitely an improvement from over the first system. The first system, many people complain that the Y and the X were way too far apart uh, from the B and A. Now I can clearly put my thumb over the Y and the B at the same time over the X and the A. I can even put my thumb over the Y and the A if I want to, uh, which is long way. So the button layout seems really nice. It feels good. It feels just like an SNES controller. And uh, I don't know, just the buttons feel right. For the D-pad, D-pad, many people had, their, had an issue with the first uh, RDP. Uh, you could push down the middle of the D-pad and all four directions will be held down at one time. But for right now, I mean, it still it feels right. L and R feel good. Uh, they're nice and, and crisp. They got that nice little button sound whenever you push down, it clicks a little bit. The D-pad does the same. Standard select and start. Uh, and a brightness control right below the screen. Volume control on the bottom. On and off on the left. Uh, DC in. AV out on top and uh, headphone jack and uh, the, the controller port on the right side. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, hook this baby up 
the television, see what it looks like when we connect the AV cables. Uh, what I'm going to show here is basically just the uh, RDP hooked up with Mega Man 7 uh, on my HDTV. So I don't expect the quality to be that great. Uh, probably better on a conventional television. So what it is, just a, the basic red, white, and yellow AV cables. And here's the uh, RDP AV. goes right to the top of it. And immediately, the game pops up. So, let it start. And there's Mega Man. And it looks uh, looks pretty daggone good. Uh, no, no problems. Volume control is actually on the uh, RDP. The volume control is so. Uh, if you want total control with your with your remote, you may want to turn this up and then use your volume control on the uh, television controller. Uh, so there's that. And now here is the uh, the Super Nintendo uh, controller port. So on the back of it can't see it right now. I know this is really tough with this, uh, the lighting and the television uh, screen on, but there's an on-off switch on the back of the uh, RDP controller port uh, for that to actually work. So basically you just plug this into the side and uh, I already have um, it turned on so it's on the on position. So you just... <laughs> Excuse me. There we go. If I can figure out which way that it goes. I think I got it right the first time. Yeah, here we go. So plug that in. And now I have a Super Nintendo controller. And left, right. And this feels this feels right. This feels great. This feels really good for uh, a Super Nintendo game and this looks really good. Uh, no complaints playing with the Super Nintendo game uh, or playing with the Super Nintendo controller uh, on this game at all. Uh, it looks good and it feels right for the controller. So that looks nice and I think uh, on the screen you're looking at it probably looks a little bit more clear than it actually is on my HDTV but I think that's because it's on an HDTV, HDTV and if it was on a, a tube television I think this would look much better but as I look at it here I can see uh, Mega Man looks a little squished in and I'm almost positive that's because it's on my television and not the tube TV so there is uh, an SNES game on on the television alright so now let's take a look at some NES games uh, uh, to get started first up uh, I've already got a game in Chippendale 2 we'll just try it out uh, take it easy when you put the games in because uh, there's a little bit of wiggle room uh, in the uh, the port as well as when you put it in to the system itself there's a little bit of wiggle room you want to make sure you find that, um, that, that that perfect fit before you want to slide it all the way down in because you just you know you don't want to break off anything Power's on. Got the uh, battery uh, indicator right here. A green light, so that's for go. And I know this is going to be really tough to see. I'll try to get it as clear as possible. There we go. No volume. Volume all the way up. I'll do it closer to the speaker. Again, no volume. Full volume. Okay. So, just looking at the game. So, A's are button B and A. Okay. And I can play this just fine. Chippendale 2, no problem. Alright, up next, uh, we're going to look at Alien Syndrome. It's also a, a Tengen cart, so let us see how that works as well. But this is, um, this game requires that you go in all four directions. Or you can go in all four directions at any time.
Okay, so here I am down. Again, B is fire. Okay, so now the big question is, this is a top view game. What happens when I push down the middle of the directional pad? So he appears to be going up and to the right when I press down the middle. Well, I guess it's really hard to, to press it right down in the middle. So I guess the bigger issue is do I have a problem playing this game? Well, when I hold left, and press up, I can go up easily. If I hold left, I can just, or right, I can just go right. If I hold down, just go down, up, left, right, no problem. Okay, up and to the left. I'm holding up and left. That works well. Down and to the right. That works pretty good. It is a little sensitive, actually. So if I'm holding on the down, on the d-pad holding down if I press just slightly to the right I go right if I hold up just slightly to the right he moves right so I hold down slightly to the left I don't really have to push my thumb on the directional pad to go left or right I can hold down and go left or right just with the down or up just with the up um, so if I want to go left and down, same thing, and left and up. I don't really have to hold down and right or down and left at the same time. Although, you still can, and it works just fine. It is a little sensitive, um, but it appears to be much better than the RDP version 1.0. Uh, I feel like I could play this game just fine, as a matter of fact. So I hope that that will clear up any issues about people wondering about the d-pad and uh, any weird uh, directional problems that you might have with the d-pad. It is a little sensitive again, um, but it seems to work okay. I'm, I'm not going to complain. All right, next game I'm going to look at is uh, Contra Force. Comes up. Yep, no problem. So again here, B and A. Uh, and this is also a game that you would really need to use up and over, up and right, up and left with. So, if it doesn't work right, this game, you may want to uh, just kind of think about it before getting it. But, hopefully, it'll work out just fine. So, I'm not really having any issues. Shooting up and to the right, down and to the right, down and to the left. I'm not really having any issues uh, at all. So, all in all, this game works fine uh, on the system. Real quick though, I did want to mention that uh, a couple times when I did put uh, some NES games here in the Retroport into the system and I turned on the RDP, nothing came up. There was uh, two or three times uh, from just putting in uh, a couple random games just to try it out. And it didn't come on, but after I, I took it out, you know, I took the, the, the Retroport out, I put it back in slowly, I put the game back in fired it up. It, it did work. It did take a couple of times. So let's take a look at some Super Nintendo games. Um, first up I want to start with is Mega Man 7. Okay, so it, it, it fires right up. So I said it has some wiggle room um, here in the cart. So you saw the, the wiggle room where I could, I could shake it. So now with the game in, the game is in and, and on, as you can see. So now I'm going to wiggle it. All right, that could be an issue with not being able to play the game, but I, I can wiggle, and it appears to do absolutely nothing uh, to the game. I can, I'm wiggling and I'm actually going rather fierce with it for what uh, someone might wiggle it if you had this playing uh, in your hands, and it's working just fine. So that's that's actually a good thing. Next up is 
Mario, Super Mario RPG. On RDP1, a lot of people couldn't even get this turned on, uh, or they would power it on, but nothing would show up. Powered, and let's see if it plays. So right away, nothing. So I'll take it out. Put it back in. On. Brightness control. It's all the way full. And nothing on Super Mario RPG. Apparently, they still haven't fixed some of the glitches. So, Super Mario RPG not working on this system. Um, this could be... It could be my system. It could be my cart. Ah, there we go. Okay. There is the gorgeous music from Super Mario RPG. Um, glitches. Uh, none. I don't see anything wrong with this screen. There is my file. Main dog. Level 30. Okay. I see nothing wrong uh, uh, so far visually with the screen. Nice. Um, it looks really nice. It's playing nice. So far, the music's there. And here it is the factory. So, um, Mario, I'm running, jump in. I'm going to the menu. No problem. And a battle. No problem. Battle screen. Okay, there we go. So there's Mario RPG. Next on the list, Chrono Trigger. Some people I've read on forums that they put in their Chrono Trigger and it, the, the RDP or maybe even the Superboy, completely erased uh, their files. So at the risk of burning some files. Uh, turn it on. Uh, works and there is one, two, two files that was on here before uh, and they're loading up and everything looks and sounds as it should just like I was playing it on the Super Nintendo. So there it is. Uh, it appears to have erased one file. There's one file on here. I did have two files on here. Now there's just one. So it does... Uh, you just be careful with that, I would say, in playing uh, RPGs or uh, any games with save files. It did delete one of the save files, not all of them. It's kind of weird to me. And again, my wiggle... Okay, so I wiggled this game, and this game totally froze. Music's still going, but the game totally froze. So that's another issue to think about. You still save the, the one uh, slot that is left. So next game on the list, of course, the infamous Star Fox. And this is a game, of course, with an FX chip that gave a lot of people problems on the RDP-1. Many people couldn't get it to work. Some people could get it to work, but very glitchy, I guess. And so I've just put it in, and guess what? Nothing. I have tried this uh, several times off camera. And every time the screen flickers and I get this weird high-pitched noise. And that's it. I have... Uh, cleaned all the connectors. I've uh, I blew in the cartridge. I've done everything, 
and again and again and again and again it just will not turn on with Star Fox and I hope uh, that it is just my cartridge or just my system if somebody else has better luck please respond to this video and let us know Donkey Kong Country is up next uh, I understand some people had some problems with Donkey Kong on the RDP one or or possibly on the Superboy but now it sounds great it looks fabulous yeah it works works no problem just fine and what's more uh, this is a game that really uh, requires you to have A and or a Y and B, excuse me, at the same time. So as you can see, here's Y, here's B, um, and, and really, I can. Uh, all right, I'm holding down Y, and I can run no problem and jump. Run, jump, and it's relatively easy. The D-pad is a little sensitive, all right? So, it's frozen, so this game does have issues as well on version 2.0. Up next is Terranigma. It is a repro uh, game. It's a reproduction card, courtesy of Time Walk Games, Spencer and Dave and crew. You guys do a fantastic job. Just a shout out. Um, this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to get an RDP and uh, really why I wanted to try out the RDP version 2.0 because I wanted to, to play uh, some repro carts uh, on the go. So I'm going to fire this up. I have not tried this out yet uh, off camera. Well, that was kind of weird, but Nintendo presents Enix. And I hope this works. Souls. There's the music. No data, no data, no game. I have not played this yet. It seems to be working just fine. That's the Super Nintendo games, uh, in a nutshell. Alright, so just to recap, games with FX chips. Well, Star Fox didn't seem to, uh, to work at all. Couldn't get it to work. Uh, the wiggle room with games. If you wiggle some of the games, I found they freeze, they're gonna lock up, just mess up entirely, not gonna work. The buttons, the button spacing is great. The buttons feel nice, they work really good. The D-pad works nice, it is a little bit sensitive. Hold down and go right, hold up and go left. Volume uh, sounds really good, it's nice and clear, and it, it's pretty good for the system. It's comparable to uh, a DS. Freezing. Uh, Donkey Kong Country, probably other games like it, uh, froze. And um, games like that, or other games, Chrono Trigger, with a safe, uh, that have safe points and that save games and have memory. LCD screen, sharp, clear, looks good, no mistakes in it, looks really, really good. Anything else, if I've missed anything, you know, let me know. Game on!